guys, it's Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor in today's PCT mini toot. I'm going to show you how to make a lumberjack plaid polymer clay cane. Now, uh, there's nothing really more Canadian than lumberjack plaid. You probably, uh, you may also know it as buffalo plaid, but it's a classic uh, pattern that goes with winter and cozy and Christmas and all kinds of stuff and it's super super popular right now with all the rustic decorations and stuff for Christmas and home decor and that kind of thing. So I thought it'd be fun to show you how to make this really quite simple polymer clay cane and um, also let me just show you what I ended up making with my uh, lumberjack cane. So I found these um, wooden they're laser cut wooden ornaments. And um, actually I was gonna give you a link to this exact product, but I couldn't find this exact design, but I found some very similar ones that I'll leave links in the description for um, that will work perfectly for this project as well. But um, these are quite popular now and you can find them everywhere with lots of neat rustic lodge kind of designs. And I thought it would go perfect with the lumberjack pattern. So I took some slices from the cane I made, made out a sheet and put it to the back of these ornaments here. And <laughs> it turned out really cute. So here it is on the back. Um, and I actually ended up pressing into the cutout area. And when you see it from the front side, you see the pattern through there. It's kind of puffy out and it looks really cute whether it's you see the front side or the back side. Um, so uh, this is quite simple. I'm just going to show you how to make the cane itself but you can do all, all kinds of different projects with this particular pattern. So oh yeah and before I go on to that if you want to learn how to to add polymer clay to wood ornaments like that one that I just showed you I do have a tutorial where I um, made these projects in there. It's exactly the same technique um, for adding the wood to, I mean, adding the clay to the wood. So um, if you need to know how to do that, um, you can check out that tutorial. Just thought I'd mention that. All right. So all you're going to need is two colors of clay. Uh, for the lumberjack, you need black and red. I'm using Primo. Um, cadmium red and primo black. You'll need a good strong clay so either Fimo, Cato, Primo, um, maybe uh, Serenid or something like that but you're going to want black and red. And then the third color that you get in the plaid will be a 50-50 mix of the black and red mixed together. So it ends up this sort of um, chestnut brown type color. And you're going to need an extruder. Now I'm going to be using uh, the Lucy Clay extruder. Um, I have a, a video all about the Lucy Clay extruder, but you could also use uh, the Macon's extruder or the Walnut Hollow one, which I also have a video on if you've never seen extruders before. And you're going to need a square disc. Now, um, you could do this whole project just by hand forming your own little sh uh, s square logs, but an extruder is going to make it really simple and easy to do. Now, the Makins and the Walnut Hollow have a square disc in the sets that they come with. It's kind of a medium sized um, square. And then the Lucy Clay one has actually uh, three different sized um, square disc. This is the medium one from uh, set number six and this is the smaller one with the three small squares and um, this is from set number two, the die set number two. This is the one I'm going to use today. It's nicer to use as small a square as possible. That way you can make a relatively small cane. If you have larger squares you're going to end up with a larger cane. You can reduce it, make the pattern any size you want so maybe you do want a larger one it's up to you it's just going to take a little bit more clay if you use a larger square but the pattern all works the same all right so I've warmed this up a bit I've already extruded out um, a bunch of uh, little square snakes of red and black 
but I'm going to do some of the 50-50 mix. So it's just one part red and one part black and you get this nice brown color. I'm just warming it up so I don't have to force it through the extruder. And we're just going to put uh, the square disc on one end. Hang on here. So you put the disc into one end. Pop that onto the end of the extruder. And all of the, the other two extruders work pretty much exactly the same way as far as that part goes. Then you have your clay in there. You want to get it skinny enough to fit in. And then the Lucy Clay um, extruder needs a plunger that goes into the back. Don't forget to put that in. Uh, I forgot the other day and made a hell of a, a heck of a mess. <laughs> Okay, so you put the plunger in the one end, and then you uh, put the, um, the threaded rod on, and just tighten it up. I love this extruder. It's so heavy duty. Um, it just makes it easy to work with and stuff, but all the, there's other ones that work well too. All right, so I'm just going to crank it out. First little bit, there's a bit of air in there. And then as I start extruding, you get three little snakes. That's another nice thing about having the three small discs is you get miles and miles of clay coming out with each extrusion. So I'm just going to go to the end because I don't know exactly how much I'm going to need. Now you'll see my little uh, piles of already cut extrusions. I cut them two inches long. I really like to make canes that are about two inches long. It's a long enough um, length that there, it's easy to reduce, but it's small enough that you're not using masses of amounts of clay. I'm just going to get my little thing here and just cut it off. There we go. All right, so I'm going to cut these into two inch lengths lay them all together. Now this uh, glass board with the grid on it makes it nice and easy Whoops. to uh, make sure that your, your uh, distances are right. So I'm just going to square up that in and then cut them two inch lengths. Now for this particular sized cane that I'm doing, you could do whatever size grid you want, but I've I have it set up so that I have um, nine red ones, nine black ones, and 18 of the mix. So I'll probably need a few more here. And this is a neat one. This is uh, done on the same kind of principles that I did the, um, the sweater cane, the uh, Christmas sweater cane, but way less complicated. <laughs> The Christmas sweater cane is, is uh, quite a uh, complex pattern and a really large cane, as you can see. All right. The nice thing about having a 50-50 mix like this, any scraps of your clay that you have left over, it's naturally 50-50 just because of the pattern. And so you can mix them all together and end up with more of this mid-color range. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so let's start building this. We're going to take some of the red ones here. And the way the pattern works is you've got red, a mix, right next to each other. You want to line them all up so that they're nice and square and not twi twisted or anything. Maybe I'll hold it this way. It's easier for me. Then a red, then a mix. Red. So we have three reds and three mixes. Now the next row, you're going to build on top. You never want to have the red and the black above each other. You would have the, um, the mix next. But I find it's easier, like rather than build here, right on top of this next row, I like to build beside it because um, then I can keep it more square. Here, I'll build it over here. So what I need next, my next one is, it's going to be a mix, a black one, a mix, 
and a black one. Mix. So three mixes and three blacks. That way, when they're separate like this, I can square them up, make sure that they're all together properly and all straight. Then I can take that whole stack and st set it right on top of here. If you try to build it straight on top, you end up, you can get them a little bit out of alignment. So then we're going to do the same thing, do another row of three, and you want to keep it in the same order. So it was red, burgundy, or whatever this color is, this mix. And hopefully I haven't got my fingers in the way. And we'll do this row by row. And that's basically it. Um, you keep going. Now, the, it's very important. I mean, you could make this as wide as you wanted to and as tall as you wanted to, but keep the numbers even. So if you're doing, like we are, we're doing six wide, then you're going to want to go six wide and six tall. Um, or eight. Keep the numbers even. You don't want to have an odd number because... When you go to, if you want to um, cut, say you want to make this pattern even larger or you reduce it down quite small. If you cut um, sections off, you want to be able to lay them next to each other so that you end up with a pattern that's consistent. I could make this sheet as wide as I want and you can't even tell where the pattern started and where it stopped because I can easily put the next section on. Okay, I'll just finish this up and I'll show you what I mean. So one more. Square that up. So I'm just going to keep going until I'm all the way up. Let me just take slices off rather than spending more time doing this because I'm half halfway there now. Or not quite half. Or just about. Anyways. If I, here, I'll show you. I'm going to take a slice off of here. I'm going to take a couple of them off so you can see. These are kind of thick slices, but I can make a great pair of earrings or a pendant or whatever I wanted with that. If the way, I'm, because of the each sides are even, I can take my next one and put it here and the pattern keeps continuing. I can also take this one and put it here and it keeps continuing. If I turn it the wrong direction, you end up with a thick line here in the middle and you would end up with two red sides next to each other. So you just want to make sure that your, your design can be continued on as large as you want it to go. So you just have to have even numbers each way. You want to never have you, you never want the red and the black directly over top of each other and you want the, the burgundy or brown color, whatever you want to call that, the mixed color in between every black and in between every red. All right, so that's a very simple cane. You can do all kinds of things with it. Like I said, if you used a larger die, you're en going to end up with a larger cane, which is a little trickier to work with, but still very possible. You could do all kinds of neat things with it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, do let us know if you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got lots of cool things that we do on a regular basis that um, you may want to check out so that you can learn more about polymer clay. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, products you'd like me to test, books you'd like me to review, whatever, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. All right, so we'll see you next time and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.